Hello, my name is Abe Saxena, and I'm a developer at DataWire and the lead developer of Telepresence. Today, I will be presenting scaling Telepresence across your organization. Uh, in essence, this talk aims to answer the question, well, I'm using Telepresence to develop my application that runs as a series of microservices in Kubernetes. And I enjoy using Telepresence to work on those microservices. And I would like to gain those same benefits uh, when working on this application across a team that is sharing a cluster or uh, an instance of the application for development purposes. Not so long ago, we were developing our first big application in Kubernetes. Um, DataWire was doing this for the first time. And um, we followed the typical journey that any company might when we started developing this application, right? We wrote some microservices, we figured out um, how to get them to talk to each other, how to get data in from the outside, etc. So we ran into this um, problem pretty early on um, where we want to answer this basic question. I have this piece of code, it does something, and I want to change that code and see what happens, right? What happens if I change this code? And so uh, we would do that. We would edit the code and follow the process that you use to get this code running in Kubernetes, right? So we build the code, then we build our container, then we push the container to a container registry, and then we uh, tell Kubernetes to um, turn the pods over so that uh, the new image gets pulled down into the Kubernetes cluster and uh, the new pods spin up. And then we can start sending inputs to our application and see what the new code does. Doing this, we realized the first problem uh, that we see when using Kubernetes, the developer loop, right? The developer loop is uh, this idea that uh, you want to be able to change your code and see what happens. For normal software, you have this process of uh, you change your code and then maybe depending on the language and system you're using, you might have to run a compile or build stage and then you can launch the code and see what it does. Uh, in Kubernetes, things uh, are a little more complicated. You have to take that executable, put it into a container image, and then somehow get Kubernetes to load that container image. And that typically means pushing it into a container registry and then bringing it back down into your Kubernetes cluster where it can then run. Continue our story. The next question we would often want to answer while developing the microservices that comprise our application is, well, I made a change and that didn't do what I expected it to do. That didn't achieve the goal I wanted or now it led to a crash or the behavior is completely different from what I had predicted or it's just subtly different. Or in summary, why didn't that work the way I expected it to? Software is opaque, right? Software, writing software is hard and debugging software is even harder than that. Uh, software doesn't give you access to its internals uh, unless you use specialized tools to look inside, like a debugger or a tracing system or a profiler, etc. And so um, being software engineers, uh, over, the, over the decades, we have developed these tools to let us look inside running software to try to understand what's going on. But when your software is running in a Kubernetes cluster, it's far away. Uh, it is the, op the opacity of your software is magnified by the fact that it's not even running on your own computer that you're uh, using to write and debug the software. It's running somewhere else. And so the net effect is you're sort of stuck with using kube control logs and adding, uh, effectively adding print statements to debug your code. So we were not happy with this situation. At DataWire, we developed the swap deployment workflow to help address these problems. In essence, what Telepresence does is replace the deployment or the pods uh, created by the deployment in your Kubernetes cluster with a proxy pod and then modifies your local machine, your laptop's networking so that it's directly connected to that proxy pod. The net effect is when other microservices in your cluster connect to the pods for this deployment, they instead connect to the proxy pod and those requests come down to your laptop and the software running on your laptop 
can respond to those requests. When the software running on your laptop needs to talk to other microservices in the cluster, uh, it can do so directly as if it were literally running in the cluster, but it is in fact running on your laptop. Let's take a look at a quick demo. So on the right hand screen, you can see I have the Hello World service checked out. Um, and there's a copy of the full text of the service uh, right in front of you, including the message that will print out this uh, Hello World, of course. And on the left, you can see that um, Coop Control shows you that Hello World has been deployed into the cluster as Hello. So now I'm going to run uh, a shell in the cluster just to demonstrate how from within the cluster we can access services in the cluster. This is no surprise. There's your hello world. Now let's launch telepresence. So I'm saying telepresence, swap the hello deployment, expose the appropriate port, and run the local copy of the server on my machine. Let's wait for telepresence to spin up. Okay, we can see that the Flask server has started and it is serving. And now let's see what happens when we try this curl. Well, we still see Hello World, but we do see a request show up here in this window indicating that the request actually hit my laptop instead of hitting the uh, pod running in the cluster. So let's uh, go one step further and uh, edit this Hello service. Okay, on the right hand side you see my editor is now open to the hello service and I will change the contents of this message and hit save and Flask is going to re reload the file and now if I do this curl once more, boom, hello KubeCon. I have live edited the code and without having to build and push an image we can see the change right from the cluster. Um, and finally Let's hit Control C to quit our telepresence session. Telepresence brings things back to their original state in the cluster, and if we run this curl again, we see the original code is being hit. Telepresence swap deployment does a good job for one developer who owns a cluster. We've been very happy with how telepresence has performed for us. But let's look at this statement uh, a little more closely. Telepresence swap deployment does a good job for one developer who owns a cluster. And by a good job, I mean that both of the main problems that I highlighted earlier are addressed. We get a fast development loop because we don't have to push and pull, build and push and pull images for every change we make to see what happens. We can simply run the code on our own machine and uh, access it using the cluster as we might in any other case, and see what happens. We can very quickly make a change and try it in the context of the entire application as opposed to trying to run a unit test of just our own microservice. And secondly, because the code is running on your laptop, uh, all the tools that you're used to using uh, from your days developing a normal application now are applicable to your Kubernetes application as well. So in other words, you can run your microservice through your IDE and step through each individual line of code in your debugger just as you always would because it's running on your laptop. And yet it still works just as it would if it were running in the cluster because it has network access to and from the cluster. Telepresence swap deployment does a good job for one developer who owns a cluster. Now what I mean by for one developer basically comes down to this. When using the swap deployment workflow, all the pods for your deployment have been replaced by the proxy pod that sends connections and requests down to your laptop. This is how telepresence works. Because every connection and every request to the microservice you've swapped goes down to your laptop, 
Effectively, that microservice is now owned by the one developer who's running telepresence. Other developers can't work on that microservice at the same time. Telepresence swap deployment does a good job for one developer who owns a cluster. When I say who owns a cluster, what I really mean is who owns the particular instance of the application that's been deployed to the cluster. So maybe you can deploy your application into a single namespace, and there are other deployments of that application uh, in other namespaces, other instances of that application in other namespaces. But essentially what I'm saying is the developer who's running swap deployment now owns the application. And why do I say that? Again, every request and connection that goes through this microservice is now being served by code running on your laptop. If you're stepping through the application in your debugger, that means the one request that you're looking at is the only request that's in play. Any other request that comes in is uh, also going to get routed to your laptop, but your laptop is sitting, the code running on your laptop is sitting in the debugger waiting for you. So in practice, once you're running swap deployment, other users can't use the application. It's simply owned by you. So let's see what that means in practice. Let's say you're given the directive to debug a problem in a particular microservice. You think to yourself, well, this is fine. I can uh, step through this uh, code in telepresence in my debugger using telepresence, and uh, we'll figure this out and we'll get it debugged nice and quickly. So how do you proceed to do this? Well, one approach is you can say, well, I'll simply grab the staging cluster, or I'll simply grab the developer staging installation, uh, this instance of the application. If anybody else wants to use the application at the same time, well, they'll just have to wait. And you do this, you, you do whatever, you, you talk to your fellow developers and you say, hey, I'm using the staging uh, application right now, so please don't do anything there. And then you go off and run telepresence, you use swap deployment, and you debug your problem. Well, at a small enough scale, this is fine. Uh, you might be able to debug your problem in an hour or two, and the other developers can keep working, but they won't be able to use the staging cluster to try out their changes because they won't be able to use the application. Another way to approach this is to say, let me spin up the app in a brand new cluster, or let me spin up the app in a brand new namespace, or however that might work for your application. In essence, you're saying, let me create an entire duplicate instance of the application just so I can own it and uh, I can run swap deployment and do what I need to do. So this is fine if your application is small, if your application is easy to spin up, uh, if it's not using resources that are not just microservices in a cluster, but say persistent databases and things like that. Basically, if it's easy to spin up another instance of the app and it's not too expensive to do so, then go ahead, do things this way. You have the entire cluster to yourself or the entire instance of the app to yourself, and you can use telepresence and this works great. And now if your application is too big or too complicated to spin up its own copy, and there are too many developers to simply say, hey, everybody, stop using the staging cluster, then you've got a bigger problem. And so this third approach that you might want to try is, I can make this work in staging. Uh, somehow I'll make it work without disrupting everybody else. And so how do you do that? Well, you start by taking the microservice you want to debug, and you replicate it. You make a copy of the deployment, and now you can use telepresence on that copy because, well, nothing's going to be talking to it. But then, well, how do you use this copy? How do you test this copy? Okay, so there's some sequence of, of microservices that uh, a request might go through where it eventually reaches the microservice you're debugging. So just make a copy of all of those and construct an entirely new chain of connections such that you can insert a request into your application or this sort of partial copy of your application. And that request will only go through this partial copy of sequence of microservices and eventually reach the copy of the deployment that you care about so you can debug. It goes without saying, this is a lot of work and it's essentially the same as spinning up a new copy of your application, except you're only spinning up a subset of the pieces and you have to make sure all the plumbing works out right and you're never gonna reproduce this when you need to debug something else in this microservice a few months from now. 
So what's the problem that we've identified here? This is the shared cluster problem. And this is what I mentioned right at the start of the talk. I like using telepresence to debug my problem or to work on my microservice, but I can't really do it easily anymore because I'm sharing a cluster or I'm sharing an instance of my application with other developers. And I don't want to take over ownership of this microservice and keep other people from working on it. And I don't want to stop other developers from using the application in the shared environment because I've now paused the entire application effectively by pausing one microservice in my debugger. So what's the core of the shared cluster problem? What I really want to do is get the same swap deployment experience, but I don't want to send all requests down to my laptop. I just want to send my requests. What I really want is some agent standing in front of the microservice that I'm trying to debug, basically saying, is this request one of my requests that I'm sending to try to debug this code? In that case, send it down to my laptop. Is this request something else? Well, then just send it to the deployment as it continues to run in the, in the cluster, and uh, business, it'll be business as usual for all other users. So let's think about that. This agent somehow, somehow has to figure out the nature of a given connection or request. Is this connection or request mine for my debugging process or something else? To do this, we're going to need to impose some restrictions and requirements on our problem domain, right? This is too broad to solve generally. The theoretical agent that sits in front of your microservice needs to be able to make decisions about the requests coming into the microservice so that it can do something smart. So if this agent needs to understand the requests going into the microservice, we need to restrict uh, what those requests can be. So let's focus ourselves on the HTTP family of protocols. Uh, and so that includes HTTP2. And um, if you're willing to let your agent terminate TLS for you, then it can even include HTTPS uh, because, again, if this agent needs to understand the request, it, of course, has to be able to decrypt it. So if we narrow ourselves to just HTTP requests, we now have the possibility for an agent to stand in, in front of your microservice, understand the requests that are coming in, and do some sort of redirecting uh, in an intelligent manner. And that brings us to our requirement. For the agent to uh, decide that a particular request is one of my requests that I want redirected we're going to need to require a special header that tells the agent, this is a debugging request. It needs to be sent down to the laptop. Now, that seems like a simple enough requirement, right? Curl has a dash H option that lets you specify a header. No big deal, right? But let's think this through. This is a little bit more of a serious requirement than just a, a command line flag in some cases. When I'm trying out the changes I've made to my microservice, I'm not necessarily just going to be curling that microservice directly it's likely that I'll need to talk to a different microservice and then it will make a request and then that other thing will make a request and so forth. And there'll be a chain of requests that eventually leads to the microservice I'm debugging. When I insert that initial request, I will include the header that I need to mark this as a debugging request. And then every intermediate microservice must pass that header along unchanged so that when the request finally reaches the microservice I'm debugging, the header is still present and the agent can act on it. This is not just a simple curl command line flag. We have to be sure that every microservice in the chain passes along this header. Now, this suddenly seems like a fairly onerous requirement, but it's really not that uncommon. If you're using distributed tracing in your application, you are already doing this for the tracing header, the trace ID header. Most frameworks include middleware that lets you do this uh, without uh, having to make sure you handle it in your code directly. With that restriction and requirement in place, you can now present the intercept workflow. The essence of the intercept workflow is that we are redirecting a subset of requests down to the developer's laptop, and all other requests flow through to the existing deployment running in the cluster, business as usual. This has two consequences. First of all, Everyone can continue to use the application as is without any disruption. When a developer adds an intercept to the agent, 
Only the requests marked with the debug header will flow down to the developer's laptop. All other requests will continue to flow to the deployment running in the cluster. Second, because the agent has the ability to make decisions about individual requests based on the headers, it becomes possible for multiple developers to intercept the same service. Developer Jane can add a new feature, developer Bob can add instrumentation or metrics, and I can go in and fix the bug I introduced in the last release. All three of us can intercept the same microservice and have different subsets of requests flow down to our respective laptops. Meanwhile, all the other developers can continue to use that microservice as it exists in the cluster. We have implemented this intercept workflow in Service Preview. Service Preview is a part of the Ambassador Edge stack, and uh, it is available right now at getambassador.io. Now, Service Preview uses Envoy Proxy to process and redirect HTTP requests. As you may know, Envoy Proxy is very good, very fast, and very stable. Service Preview does not do everything that Telepresence does. It doesn't offer some of the advanced features, such as uh, access to config maps and secrets and other file system volume mounts, uh, nor does it offer environment variables. But it does offer the core features of letting the code running on your laptop talk to other microservices in the cluster and letting other microservices in the cluster talk to the code running on your laptop. Now with the additional feature of only a subset of requests coming down to your laptop based on the intercepts that you've set up. Service Preview, as I said, uses Envoy Proxy for its HTTP management, and it uses other telepresence technology under the hood to achieve the rest of its features. While there isn't a direct integration yet, integration between Service Preview and telepresence is in the works. One more very quick demo uh, of Service Preview this time. So on the left, we have the same um, setup as before. There's a hello service. We can curl it from within this pod. This is just a kube control exec. On the right, uh, you can see I have set up an intercept. Um, I have looked, but I've seen that hello is available for intercept. I have set up an intercept. And the header I'm matching is the dev header, and it needs to be set to this value, ARK3. And when that um, header value combination is seen, uh, the agent is going to redirect that traffic to my own machine on port 8000. And then you can see that I have started the application on my own my machine, and it is running, and these curls, which I can run repeatedly, do not cause anything to happen there. However, if I run a curl, whoops, if I run a curl with the special header, then we see hello kubecon since I made that change to the code earlier. And uh, you can see as I run these curls, we get uh, requests showing up on the right side. Meanwhile, regular curls without the header continue to go through to the existing pod. Only the traffic we want to be intercepted is being intercepted and sent to my laptop. So in summary, Telepresence does a great job. And whenever you have the opportunity to use it, it is a complete solution and it, it offers great features and uh, you should use it. Service Preview is brand new. It's part of the Ambassador Edge stack and it makes it practical to use some telepresence style features while sharing an instance of an application, sharing a cluster. Check it out at getambassador.io. Finally, if you'd like to get in touch, learn more, uh, our Slack channel is on the screen, as is my email address and my Twitter handle. Thank you very much for your time. I hope this was of interest. Let's move on to questions.